Okay, let's talk about the MTLE NES Essential Academic Skills Math Subtest. So this is quite a title, but if you're watching this video, I am uh, I'm going to assume that you um, recognize this title and you're actually preparing for this exam. So um, with that being said, you would also uh, by definition be a uh, person that's going to become a teacher or is a teacher in the great state of Minnesota. So welcome to the video. Um, what I'm going to be doing is talking about the um, obviously the mathematics portion of this particular exam. But uh, before going any further, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is John. I'm a middle and high school math teacher and I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. So I construct online courses. I've been doing this for many, many years. And uh, so I do a lot of um, middle and high school level math courses, but I do a lot of uh, courses constructed and created many, many courses over the years for test preparation as well. And I actually have an MTLE NES Essential Academic Skills Math Subtest um, the prep course. So I'm going to leave the link to that course in a description of this video if you think that's something that you might be interested in. But um, really what I want to do is kind of give you a little bit of sense of what's going to be on this particular um, uh, test in terms of the mathematics portion of it, then kind of challenge you with a quick little pop quiz here. So on uh, this exam, you can just see by the title, Essential Academic Skills. So obviously math is going to be uh, tested on, on on this particular exam. There's a subtest uh, to the MTLE NES Essential Academic Skills exam. But um, the type of mathematics uh, that are going to be on there, I would kind of classify as kind of high school level math. So algebra, geometry, amongst other kind of concepts. So if you're thinking that, well, all I need to know is basic, like elementary level math, and really that's not the case. Okay, you're gonna to need to know that, but you're also, you're also gonna to have to know some high school level math. You don't have to know the most advanced high school level math, like calculus and all that kind of good stuff, but you're gonna to have to know a considerable amount of mathematics to do well here. So um, this particular problem, um, hopefully, is gonna be pretty easy. So when you're studying math, you always want to kind of start with the basics and build yourself up. So let me go ahead and tell you this problem. It's kind of obvious what it is. Uh, then I'm going to give you an opportunity to solve it, and then I'm going to solve it. So without the aid of a calculator, okay, don't break out your cell phone or, you know, use your calculator or your computer. See if you can do this by hand. What I'd like you to do is to add 1.7 and one third. So if you could see if you could do that by hand without the aid of a calculator, then uh, we'll talk about, of course, how to do this. So if you want to pause the video and go ahead and try to do that now, that'd be excellent. Okay, so let's move on with this problem. So here we have a decimal and a fraction. So in, in order to add these two numbers, we're going to have to get them in the same format. So we either need two decimals or two fractions, and either way is correct. So let's go ahead and take a look at both ways. Let's actually uh, uh, use the decimal format first. So let's keep 1.7 as a decimal. Now let's take that one-third fraction and turn it into a decimal. So how do we turn a fraction into a decimal? Well, what you would do is you take this 1, and you would divide it by the three. We take the numerator, just as it's written here, and we divide it by the dot denominator. Now we can use long division, but if you do have your calculator, kind of cheat here for a second, go one divided by three, you're gonna see that it's going to be 0.3333 repeating, okay? But most of you also should know these very common um, fractions have decimal equivalents. So if you said, well, one third, I could just uh, use the decimal equivalent 0.3, that would be Excellent, okay, or at least sufficient for this particular problem. All right, so now we have two decimals. I have this fraction. Uh, I need to uh, have the decimal equivalent for this fraction, one-third, as 0.3. And now I'm going to add these two up, and hopefully you get 2.0. So let's kind of just quickly recall how we do that. 1.7, I'm going to add 0.3. Remember, you, add, you line up the decimal points, okay? And now we're going to go add down, so 7 to 3 is 10. So I have this zero, I'm gonna carry the one. I'm gonna add one and one, that's two. So I have 2.0. So just a quick little review of adding decimals. Again, all this basic math, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing decimals, place value, all that stuff that you're gonna to need to know um, for this exam as well, amongst other things. So you really need to um, have uh, a good study plan uh, for the MTLE NES Essential Academic Skills. It's an important uh, exam 
if you're going to uh, you know teach in Minnesota you, you need to pass this exam I think it's a, I'm certain it's a requirement okay so this is one way we have so we have 2.0 now let's take a look at um, the way we can do this problem using fractions so let's keep the one-third so we'll keep this one-third as a, a fraction now let's take a look at the uh, decimal 1.7 so what is the fractional equivalent of 1.7 well 1.7 how I would say this is what 1 1 and 7 tenths okay so this is 1.7 of course I would say it that way this is also 1 and 7 tenths or 1 and 7 tenths so I would have this fraction 1 and 7 tenths okay so now I have two fractions so now how do I deal with this well this is a good um, little quick review for adding fractions a good little opportunity to do that here I have a mixed number fraction here I have a proper fraction so I'm gonna go ahead and change this mixed number into a proper fraction so I'm gonna go 10 times 1 is 10 plus 7 so I'm gonna have 17 over 10 plus 1 third okay so at any time you think that you can kind of solve this remaining problem I would say go ahead and pause and do so alright so you can see we're adding two fractions we're gonna to have to get the lowest common denominator here which is what that's 30 now I'm skipping over some things here because you know I don't, there's a lot of little subtopics that we're hitting this is like all covered in my full course but if you're a little you know if you're struggling here and there you know just use that as feedback of like hey yeah you definitely need to kind of study right so if I'm gonna uh, convert both of these fractions so they both have the lowest con common denominator 30 this one I'm gonna have to multiply by 3 top and bottom right so 3 times 10 is 30 that gets me this lowest common denominator but if I multiply the bottom by 3 I'm gonna have to multiply the top uh, I need uh, multiply the denominator by 3 I have to multiply the numerator by 3 and this one I'm gonna multiply both the top and bottom by 10 so when I do that I'm gonna get 10 thirds here and then 17 times 3 gets me 51 all right, so when I add these two here now, okay, now that I have lowest common denominator uh, as 30, this is going to be, I'm going to add the numerators, right? And my answer will be 61 over 30. Now, if you were to go on your calculator at this point, this would be a good answer, uh, okay? Obviously, this is, this is correct, but let's just do something. If you do have a calculator, let's take 61 and divide it by 30, you get 2.0. Uh, three 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 it kind of goes on and all these little extra threes hanging out here um, the reason why this answer isn't exactly uh, 2.0 is because we used 0.3 uh, for one-third 0.3 is a decimal uh, basically it's an estimate it's not an exact equivalent okay so we kind of dropped all these other uh, threes here but the whole idea is not to get I don't want to say overly technical. It's just to review some of these concepts of adding uh, a fraction with a decimal and how we change a decimal to a fraction and a fraction to a decimal. Just a kind of quick, you know, problem that we can kind of cover, you know, a lot of little topics at once, okay, without turning this into a complete full lesson. All right, so let me go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, uh, my biggest, you know, advice to you is, uh, take this exam seriously. I mean, if you're this point in your career, I know you already are, you know, taking it seriously, but really get to know what's um, the kind of math that's, that you're going to be expected to know on the MTLE uh, NES Essential Academic Skills. Again, it's considerable. So have a good game plan. And uh, along with that, um, let me give you a couple few tips. Uh, the first is I'm going to leave again um, the link to my test prep course, which I think you'll find extremely comprehensive. I'll leave the link in the description of this video so if you want to check that out. I've been on YouTube for 12 plus years. I literally have hundreds and hundreds of videos that can help you out. So, you know, um, something that I'm just passionate about. Uh, and so I got basic math to advanced math. A lot of topics that you're definitely going to see on the MTLE, uh, Essential Academic Skills Exam. Uh, so these are two uh, big resources that can definitely help you out. Hey, if you like this video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Is this like, uh, you know, your first time taking an exam or is this your second time or third time? One of the things that um, if you're new to teaching, you may not be aware of is that a lot of teachers um, out there have to take 
certification exams more than once. Okay, it's not uncommon for teachers to struggle and to get through and pass it. So don't feel like you know, hey, you, 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 if you failed this exam before, or if you're struggling with it, that it's somehow you're different than a lot of teachers out there. Okay, so. It's not uncommon, and it's across the board uh, uh, in all types of different levels of certifications. Remember, to, you know, to become a teacher, uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of people, um, you know, this is my own little personal opinion. A lot of people respect what teachers do, but uh, just like if you never served in the military, you never would realize what that's like unless you actually uh, done it. And I'm, I'm a Marine Corps veteran, so it's just one of those things that you can you can read about and and, and talk about. But if you've never been there, you never you can never really understand it completely. Same thing with being a, uh, being a teacher. If you've never be, been a teacher, uh, what teachers have to go through in terms of preparing for exams, their education, let alone just learning how to manage students in the classroom, um, it's challenging, okay, for sure. Uh, but along with those uh, challenges, you know, when you get through all these exams and certifications and etc., cetera, bec um, there becomes, their, their, at the other end of that, tunnel or some tremendous rewards as well and that's why people teach okay so i'm going to encourage you to keep studying hard i want to thank you for your time i wish you all the best and have a great day